This is the start of a new chapter in which you will build on the knowledge you acquired in the previous chapter to create a data drill down. Now, what is a data drill down? In this chapter, we will create the pages of the individual news and events. So far, you have a list of news and a list of upcoming events, but you also have those read more links. And when you click on a read more link, you want to see a specific news or a specific events. To do that, we need two pages. We need a master page and a detail page. Now, the master pages are already created. We have one main page for the news and one main page for the events. In this chapter, we will create the detail pages of those news and events. To do that, we will need to pass information from the master page to the detail page. We will need to tell the detail page what news or what event to display. But we have a problem because the web is a stateless environment. So what does that mean? It means that when the browser connects to the server, when the browser sends a request to the web server, the web server answers that request, but then the web server completely forgets about that transaction. So when you send the next request to the server, it is an entirely new transaction, and the web server has no idea that it comes from the same browser from the same client and that you already made requests in the past to that server. It doesn't know about it. So this is not a cold fusion issue. This is the way the web works. This is the way HTTP works. And it's the same issue in cold fusion and in other competing technologies such as PHP, for example. So how does cold fusion circumvent that problem? In cold fusion, we have different persistence scopes. For example, we have the form scope that we already worked with a little bit earlier in this course. When you submit the form, you can pass data from the form page to the form action page using the form scope. So here, it's one answer to that web statelessness. You can pass data from one page to another. You can also use the session scope. The session scope persists all the data of a specific user. So the data you store in the session scope will persist across requests. The same thing with the data that you will store in the application scope. It will persist across requests. Now, the difference between the session and the application scope is that the application scope stores data for the whole website, regardless of the user that makes the request. The session scope stores data that is specific to one user, such as a shopping cart, for example. We also have the cookie scope. That's exactly what they are used for. Cookies are used to store data on the browser, on the machine of the visitor, so that that data can be persisted across requests. Now, in this chapter, we will use the URL scope. So we will pass data from one page to another using URL parameters. So this is the table of content of this chapter. We will generate dynamic links. You will see how you can dynamically generate the data that you want to pass from one page to another, from the master to the detail, using URL parameters. Then you will create the detail page of the news section and the detail page of the events section. To do those things, you will need to learn some more techniques and you will learn about multi-table query. So you will query the database and take information from multiple tables in the database. And you will also use CFLCIF to make or CFIF and CFLs blocks a little bit more sophisticated. With that being said, let's jump right into data drill down.